a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, a giant cooking arena, a kitchen stadium. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. On a to realize his dream, he first secretly started selecting the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Masaharu Morimoto. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. The Kitchen Stadium is the arena where Iron Chefs await the challenges of master chefs from around the world. Both the Iron Chef and Challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the Iron Chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. But this man has even bigger dreams. Yes, he is on a quest to see and experience more from around the world. In Paris. In Beijing. in Hong Kong and other exotic locales. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where you will meet the master chefs from around the world and their artistic creations. What inspiration will today's challenger bring and how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If memory serves me right, the number of Italian restaurants has skyrocketed in Tokyo in recent years. You know, we see so many Italian restaurants in Tokyo these days, but few are really what you would call attractive. But recently, I found a great one. It's in Western Japan, actually in Kyoto, that, well, I must admit, I'm a fan of myself. The chef whom Yamada has spotted is not in Tokyo, but in Kyoto. Chefs Harada of the Brighton Hotel, Murata of Kikunoi, and Takahashi of Hyote all frequent the place. He is very dynamic, yet at the same time, he is not out of control. His works are truly innovative. The interesting point is that they make me feel at peace with myself. In Kyoto, where tradition is most important, the man concocting superlative Italian food, we must have him in our kitchen stadium. Today's challenger, the innovator in Italian cuisine from Kyoto's Il Paparardo, Yasuhiro Sasajima. He became intrigued with cooking while working part-time in a famous kitchen. After apprenticing at many top kitchens, he was appointed head chef of Il Papalardo. The restaurant is always booked to capacity up to one week ahead. Here in Western Japan, I think, compared to Tokyo, guests are really picky. They have a specific taste in mind that they're looking for, you know, and just having a reputation or a name just won't cut it. And recently, we see so many restaurants just trying to recreate somebody else's original recipe, you know? But uh, I'm a chef in Kyoto, so I want to present dishes that have a Kyoto feeling to them as well. He says Italian cuisine can be enhanced by using local ingredients. He uses the vegetables of Kyoto in his divine creations. His works are truly revolutionary, using the basic techniques of Italian cooking. This is his message. And to reinforce this message, he demands a battle with Iron Chef Kobe. 
So now, Sasajima, show us what you mean and wake up the Italian chefs in Tokyo. I'm going to show what Italian chefs in Western Japan can do. I'll win. The challenger from Kyoto entering Kitchen Stadium claims Italian cuisine chefs in Tokyo have been resting on their laurels far too long. Today, it's his plan to shake up Tokyo's Italian cuisine scene. Many top chefs frequent his establishment in Kyoto. They'll be watching, as will all the chefs from the country's best Italian restaurants. Pleasure to be here. Oh, there are just so many. Uh, I think they seem to lack originality. I will. Yes. Iron Chef Italian Masahiko Kobe ascends to his position in Kitchen Stadium. Skills acquired at Enoteca Pinchiori, the top restaurant in Italy, have been developed and refined to a degree bringing him riches and fame. Today, he faces new pressure to defend the integrity of Eastern Japan's Italian fare against the challenger from the West. Italian それでは発表します。今日のテーマはこれです。今日のテーマ Two combatants today putting more than their own reputations on the line. Challenger Sasajima pits his innovative style representative of Kyoto, Western Japan, against Iron Chef Kobe, the leader of Tokyo's Italian Cuisine Brigade, battling on behalf of Eastern Japan. All right, opening gong sounds, and once again, look at Kobe, the fastest of the Iron Chefs, sprinting to the ingredient stand, already getting a load of eggplants back to his workstation. The challenger is still up there at the stand while Kobe is already slicing away. That's his usual opening gambit move quick right from the get-go. And now the challenger finally getting back. Atori, today's theme, Kamo eggplant. They're from Kyoto and they're about four bucks a pop, right? Yeah, 500 yen or four US dollars each. Now in Italian, eggplants are called melanzane. Mm -hmm. And melon means apples, hmm, and it almost okay. tastes like a fruit if you have it as is, very much a fruity flavor. All right, well, you see the Iron Chef there sliced open some, and they do look like a fruit sliced open right there. Combatants from Tokyo and Kyoto, the modern and ancient capitals, respectively. Kusan? Yes, go ahead, Ota. When asked his views on Italian restaurants in Tokyo, Chef Sasajima said, well, let me be blunt. In my honest opinion, many of them are just trying to make money, and they don't have originality, so hmm. the challenger not mincing words today. All right, well, that's what we want. We always want the straight scoop and challenge. Challenger Sasajima's restaurant in Kyoto is called Il Paparaldo. 
Now, the number of Italian restaurants in Kyoto is on the rise. Uh, there's about 40 now, and that's a 50% increase from wow. last year. But hear this, the number in Tokyo, exact figure, 2,226. Right, well, that's just a bit too many. Uh, the number doubled in the last five years or so. It's a bit much. All right, thanks, Doc. And this is the time where we introduce our guests for today's eggplant battle. To my right, we have actress Kazuko Kato. Thanks for coming. It's nice to be here. Kato-san, thinking of Italian dishes using eggplant, uh, which of them come to mind first for you? Well, the first one that comes to mind is, you know, tomato sauce for pasta or something. Mm -hmm. But aside from Italian food, I think this Kamo eggplant is really good with miso. All right, well, we'll see if they can make something close to that. I don't know if that's in their plans, but yeah. All right, and our other guest, who will also be on the tasting panel today, actor Yoshizumi Ishihara. Thanks for coming. Hi, nice to be back. Well, Ishihara-san, have you been to any Italian restaurants in Kyoto? Well, I just came back from Kyoto yesterday. I heard the name of the Challenger's restaurant, Il Paparaldo. Uh -huh. Everyone says, go there while you're in Kyoto, so... All right, well, the word is already out then. And as usual, we've got our commentator, Dr. Hattori. And as usual, always a pleasure. And for this Italian cuisine battle with the subplot of the ancient capital versus the modern capital of Italian cuisine, some big names have showed up in the royal box. First, right there from restaurant Hiro, Chef Hiromi Yamada. He's a renowned Italian cuisine chef in Eastern Japan. Next to him from restaurant Marie, that is Chef Koji Kobayashi. And also interested enough to observe this battle today is Chef Hiroyuki Kitani from Basta Pasta. He's one of the key players in the business. And from Vigoroso, that is Takamasa Weitake, the conjurer of olive oil. These four men, leaders of Italian cuisine in Tokyo, have come in to watch this one live and see how Iron Chef Masahiko Kobe handles himself against the young and rising challenger from the West. And as we were introducing the luminaries up in the royal box, the Iron Chef working now and What's he up to there with that? <laughs> he's making rabbit ears. <laughs> like <laughs> rabbits. Go ahead, Ota. The Iron Chef said that he's never used this particular type of eggplant, Kamo eggplants, and he said that they have a sweet aroma, and that's going to be a key in planning and preparing his dishes today. All right, he's never worked with it before. Doc, what's the difference between regular eggplant and this Kamo eggplant? Well, it has a really fine fiber. Regular eggplants absorb a lot of oil, but this one doesn't, relatively speaking. Kusan? Go. I'm still in the Iron Chef site, and what he was just doing was adding olive oil and salt to the eggplants before putting them into the oven. Okay, so olive oil and salted, heavily salted at that, and from the replay, he's already got some eggplant cooking in the oven. Iron Chef Italian, Masahiko Kobe, always under pressure, as are the three other Iron Chefs, of not only having to cook well, but also beat the challenger's best. Fukuizan? Yes. In this pot, the Iron Chef has a base made from a combination of white wine and honey. And eggplant slices in a mixture of white wine and honey there. Hmm, maybe a dessert? Yes, uh, dolce. Getting it started early, and from the shot right there, some foam visible on the surface. Fukuizan? Yes. I asked the challenger if he could tell me the difference between ordinary eggplants and kamo eggplants, and he said these have a stronger flavor. You have to be extra careful when matching them with other ingredients. They match perfectly with oil, so that'll be a key. All right, that's good. We wouldn't want oil-drenched eggplant, would we? What fish is the challenger using? That's horse mackerel. Filet of mackerel on Sasajima's side. Now, the Iron Chef, two pans cooking, similar looking ingredients in each, side by side right there. What's he up to? Eggplant right here in front of us. Yes, we've got a rare pre-tasting treat here, some Kamo eggplant, uncooked. We'll check it out. How is it? How's it taste? The skin has a strong green smell. Yeah, but the inside is a little sweet. Mm, sweet, yeah. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, sweet like an apple, isn't it? Mm, it's like an apple, yeah. So yeah. Mm. an apple-flavored mm. veggie would That's be a good, good way to put it. I'd say so. Okay. Iron Chef's side now to the left. Whoa, down boy. Some chopped up beef on fire there. Yeah. Fukuizan. Go. The meat that he's using here is lamb. Okay, lamb, I see, yeah. Lamb meat it is, and some of it's slightly charred there, but uh, that would seem to be a good match with the eggplant, right, Ishihara? -san? Yes, it should go well together. Fukuizan? Yes. I asked the Iron Chef what his approach was to today's theme ingredient, and he said these eggplants are sweeter than normal, so anything is possible. I could even use them in place of apples. All right, well, we get some confirmation on what we thought there. Okay, now, no. this moments ago, looking like a possible dessert here. Ota, is this the one he was frying? Actually, no. These are the ones that he had stewing in the white wine and honey, and he took them out, sprinkled some sugar on top of them, and then put them back in the oven again. And check it out. The Iron Chef now has three trays in the oven, trays of eggplant, and they certainly appear to be for three separate dishes. The ones on the bottom layer are for dessert. Okay. And the challenger has pulled out a netting of fat here now. 
Oh yes, Sasajima's side, a large, thick netting of fat. And we know that there's boiled eggplant scallops on top and sea urchin added right there. Wow. Mmm, it looks really good. <laughs> All together now on the fat netting. Okay, and sprinkling salt. Take it. The challenger had some more comments on Italian cuisine chefs, not just uh -huh. in Tokyo, but in Japan in general. Okay. He said, excluding the great chefs up in the Royal Box, I see just too many chefs who do nothing but copy Italian recipes. He says, I believe in using local ingredients in Italian. All right, well, he's got his philosophy and adheres to it. I hope he wasn't talking about Kobe, though. <laughs> well, in Italy, there are 20 provinces, and cuisines are all different. Wow. That's the same way in Japanese cuisine. Cuisine. Right, local areas have their own styles, exactly. Okay, and now Kobe is gently dropping some eggplant into the oil. These these are the ones... The ones that he had in the beginning, right? Yeah, he hollowed them out. I think these are containers for something else. He's not though. going to put the rabbit ears up? Uh, well, I can't tell at this time. Maybe they'll point upwards after cooking. We're back, now on the challenger side, and stuffed in the netting. Mmm, looks good, Kato-san? Yeah, yeah, they do look good. You know, I notice he's using a lot of seafood. Yeah, right. Prawns, scallops, other stuff. Right, a lot of seafood. But, you know, on the other hand, the Iron Chef has been using a lot of meat. Right, no seafood as of yet. Strictly a meat and eggplant man so far. Hey, the Iron Chef is now using the blender. Okay, I think he has put in mascalcone and honey. Fuzan? Yes. Yes, as Doc said, he's blending mascalcone, honey, and also milk. Okay, so Hattori, does this mean ice cream already? Well, you remember the ones he's cooking in the bottom layer of the oven? Yeah. I think he's going to combine those with this. Okay, so we shall have to wait and see, but... As usual, you're being, probably yeah. right. Go ahead. The Iron Chef says he is shooting for five dishes today with a touch of Kyoto-style Japanese cuisine in some oh. of them to counter the challenger. You said Kyoto-style mm -hmm. Japanese? That's what he said. Okay. The Iron Chef's going to try to turn the tables a bit on the challenger by adding a touch of preparation from the challenger's backyard. Maybe he's heard enough talk about all that Kyoto-style cooking. Okay, now the challenger has started grilling the items wrapped in the netting of fat here. Fukuizan? Yes. Just let me review the seafood ingredients that the challenger has wrapped in this fat. Okay. Uh, he has prawns, sea urchin, and scallops sprinkled lightly with salt and pepper and sandwiched between fried eggplant. Whoa, we are talking about something loaded with seafood in this dish. Yeah, this is a healthy looking dish, veggies and seafood. And volume wise, it could actually be a main course. Okay. And he has added okra. Now, I don't think he's going to cook these, so this is anti-pasta, maybe an appetizer. So, Doc, we would have to assume right here that uh, eggplant would be added to this as well? Yeah, I think. Well, now the Iron Chef is using some of the little eggplants. Yes, pulling that tray from the oven. What do you think? Are they are they cooked enough? I'd say so. Fukuizan? Yes. Yes, these chopped eggplant bits hot out of the oven are the ones that he fried after rubbing them with salt. All right, thanks, Ota. But look at that. I, I mean, I've never seen eggplants so thoroughly cooked there. My gosh, they appear to be devoid of moisture, like eggplant <laughs> chips or crunchies of some sort. Okay, now wait a minute. What has he got in the frying pan? Is that sautéed carrots? Maybe. Ca carrots? No. Here? This one? I think he put them together with meat or the lamb meat. Oh, yes, there is the Fukuzan. lamb meat. Yes, Hota. A list of what's in the container includes olive oil, garlic, chili pepper, carrots, onion, celery, lamb, consomme, and white wine. You remembered all that? And so quick, too. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> okay, to be stuffed here. Yeah, some stuffing. And what does he have here? Uh, cheese. Yes, he has used mozzarella cheese in this. Oh, okay. Mozzarella yeah, cheese. Mozzarella. Okay, thanks for confirming. And going on top of the cheese, the previous mixture Ota told us about with the lamb in there. Okay, I believe he will be grilling this once again all together now. The whole eggplant. Yeah. And the rabbit ears could be flipped back, right? It could happen, okay. I guess. Okay, it does look like a Japanese-style dish. Now here, the challenger's side. Okay, rigatoni. This is a type of pasta. I'm most interested in his preparation. 30 minutes have elapsed. All right, 30 minutes gone. The battle now into the second half. And Ota's up in the royal box for an interview with Chef Yamada. Take it, okay? It would be my pleasure, Chef Yamada. Uh, watching this battle, how do you think the challenger is doing so far? Well, I think he's very controlled, he's staying calm, and the theme ingredient is something familiar to him. Okay, and how about the Iron Chef? Well, I think he's improved a lot. Uh huh. The Iron Chef said that he'll add a touch of Kyoto style to his dishes. What do you think about that? Uh, he really doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so, so between the two, which do you think is doing better so far? Well, I think the challenger's way ahead, no doubt. Okay, thank you. A vote for the challenger, Fukui-san. Boy, some blunt remarks there. Wow, tough room. Chef Yamada saying he thinks the challenger's way ahead of the Iron Chef. 
It almost sounds like he was dissing the Iron Chef. Yeah. Not too diplomatic there, I'd say. <laughs> not at all. If not dissing, he was certainly dismissing him. Maybe there's a Tokyo versus Tokyo agenda going on up there. Yeah, this always seems to happen, though. You know, the Iron Chef Italian is always bad talk. I feel sorry for him. He was really unloaded on there. All right, well, we'll see now if the Iron Chef is going to make his own pasta. I already made my pasta. You missed that. You did it already? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, did he really he make did, it? Yeah, he did. All right. Uh, my apologies, Iron Chef. Fukuzan. Please take it. Into the ice cream machine, the Iron Chef has poured the mix of mascalcone honey and milk, to which has also added rum, and the ice creamer is taking it from there. It's in action. Oh, okay. Ah. And what? Raisins or something yeah, going some to be kind added of here? Dried fruit. This is a gelato. All right. The Iron Chef's gelato is underway at this time. Fukui-san? Yes. Here's the latest on what's happening to the item he wrapped with the fat netting. Okay, he said because challenger. the eggplants were so thick, the fat just melted away before they were even done. So now he's put everything back into the oven for more grilling. All right, and here's a look at it moments ago. You know, that could be the right decision. Usually you fry it a little on the pan and then okay. put it into the oven, and that'll give you better results. So doing it this way might work. Okay, we'll see. And now this, the makings of a sauce for pasta? Well, I did see rigatoni before, so maybe, yeah. All right. Hmm, the Challenger's deep frying something here. Yes, on the Challenger side, it looks like the pieces have been breaded there. I believe this is foie gras. Foie, foie gras? gras? Oh. Yeah, with herbs. Deep fried foie gras with herbs from Sasajima. Fukuisan? Take it. In this baking pan, the Challenger has foie gras coated with eggs, flour, and breadcrumbs, but there are some other special ingredients that should be mentioned as okay. well. Parmesan cheese, estragon, thyme, and olive oil. A lot of flavors in there. Hmm. Yeah, but will they match well? It sounds almost too strong for the uh, eggplant. Think no, so? I've had foie gras and eggplant. Yeah. It was good, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, you're right in saying that the ingredients alone sound strong, but the eggplant will absorb the flavor and create a delicate balance, I think. Mm. I see, like when we're eating them together, right? Right. Fukui-san. Yes, Hota. You see the Challenger's frying pan with the red ingredients in it? Let's see if yes. we can get a shot of it yes. here. Uh, okay. There it is. Uh, these are tomatoes, diced tomatoes and whole tomatoes. He also has olive oil, whole garlic, clam soup, and fennel in this. And I believe he has mackerel in it, too. Yes, we saw that in there earlier. And I gotta believe that this one here is for the pasta dish, the rigatoni that he's going to prepare. Well, I saw the Iron Chef doing something with the eggplants he chopped pretty small. Yeah, he was squeezing them together. Right, yeah. right. Hmm. Well, those are the ones he said he chopped. He made them actually too small. And now Iron Chef Kobe continues to roll the pasta, his own, handmade. I'm wondering how he's going to finish his pasta, though. Sure, what's his inspiration for today? The Prince of Pasta with his pasta dish. Now, he was gathering the minced eggplants. I think he'll be putting them into the pasta. So it'll be ravioli? Yeah, for the ravioli's ingredients. Camo eggplant ravioli. Is it in the cards for the Iron Chef? We're back, still on Iron Chef Masahiko Kobe's side and the Prince of Pasta on top of his game today. Now I see some truffles here. All right, this is on the Challenger side. Frying pans are in action. What is this, a, a steak? Well, he's using eggs. Oh, okay, I know what he's doing. Perhaps a piccata with the foie gras item that he was making a minute ago. Now I think he's gonna put them on top. Oh, yeah. I got it. Not easy to think right along with these guys. Now the Iron Chef, okay, his pasta. Okay, see that? The ravioli. Absolutely. Fukui-san? Oh, yeah. Yes. What he's making this ravioli out of is eggplants, which were first salted, okay, then fried right. in a pan, and then baked in the oven. Okay, right. Now remember that he had two frying pans? Yes. These are one of those, and they've minutes. absorbed some of the oil. All right, 20 minutes left in this Italian cuisine Fukui -san? battle on the challenger side. Go, Ota. These are Shijo scallions. Shijo scallions? Hmm, must be grown in Kyoto. I think you mean Cujo scallions. <laughs> Sorry, Cujo scallions. <laughs> Shijo's a street uh, in Kyoto. <laughs> all right, Ota, uh, wrong address, but you're still in the same zip code, we've okay? We've got some duck here. Ooh, it's mm. looking good. Now that's the usual combination, duck and scallions in Japanese cuisine. Uh, that's a great combination. I'll second on. that, yes. I asked the challenger about his use of duck meat, and he said, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to play on words, kamo eggplants, and kamo meaning duck in Japanese. Right. I just wanted the strong flavors of the eggplant and the duck to complement each other in this dish. I've always liked this combination. It's got to be the flavors. Word play won't cut it with the panel. Hey, it's fun watching the Iron Chef. Oh, yeah, and all of his ravioli is finished now. Actually, it's looking like gyoza. <laughs> but gyoza, you fry these, he will boil. 
as he folds up the last couple and he does have a pot of boiling water at the ready on his stove so he will go the conventional route with these ravioli and simply boil them. The challenger's using caviar. Oh, huh. caviar. Hmm. Uh, did he use eggplant in this? I think in the form of puree. I think he'll add it like a sauce. Okay, and an eggplant puree added in there according to Doc Katori. And now swinging back to the challenger, there it is, the creation with the fat netting after a second stint in the oven. Scusan? Yes. Yes, the puree that you were just talking about, uh -huh. the one with the caviar in right. it, I just confirmed that he has included eggplant in that sauce. Okay, thanks. And that very pale green colored sauce, it's pureed eggplant. And now the challenger flipping and frying his rigatoni. He also had clams in this. The, the body of the sauce is gonna be something. It's gonna be really, really great. It's closer to Vangole Rosso than Vangole Bianco in taste, I think. Wow, in another league. And now Sasajima's added, I think, the duck meat there. And the Cujo scallions together with the duck meat, a classic combo in Japanese cuisine. Here's the Iron Chef. He's wrapping sea urchin, I think, am I right? No, what is that? What's he putting on top? It's flavored with mustard, I think. Squeeze mustard? mustard? Tell us. The Iron Chef is now applying dark mustard to the grilled eggplant slices, which, as our guests have said, he is also sandwiching sea urchin between. Okay, clarification there. With the grilled slices of eggplant, one with the urchin and one leaning without. Okay, I think this will be an appetizer. A starter of um, sea urchin, eggplant, and mustard. <laughs> Maybe he'll still do something else with that one, okay? Ten minutes to go. All right, ten minutes left, and the Iron Chef side, what is this one? Looks like sticks wrapped in a bean curd of sorts. Sure, but what's inside? Ota? These stick-like items that the Iron Chef is frying are a kind of wrapping in which he has stuffed uh, rolled minced grilled eggplant and basil. Hmm. I think it's an appetizer, right? I okay, think you're sounds right. yeah. good to me. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna put a lot of things on the plate, I'm sure. He'll offer two types of appetizers for the tasters. Now back to the challenger. Here. Oh, okay, yeah. Now this is the picata. The bottom is the picata. Ah, and the duck's on top, right? Right, the duck and the grilled foie gras on top. Alright, whatever the order. This one's <laughs> a mouth waterer, that's for sure. Mm, if you go to Kyoto and have this, you wouldn't, uh, you know, question the combination. Kamaduck in Japanese and uh, Kamo <laughs> eggplants. Well, yeah, I, yeah, wordsmith there, I could get off on that. Now over here to the wrapped items. Right, an appetizer. And Ishihara-san, I think he got it right, actually. One dish, actually a palette combining two items. Not just two items, there are three of them there, all wrapped. Kind of a, a wrap session for your appetizers. <laughs> mm, yeah, it looks great. And look at it, a very artistic presentation. Oh, the pasta's coming. Five minutes to go. Okay, boy, this looks great. Now, I'm a pasta lover too, rigatoni. I think he did the right thing adding clams in this. Oh, it does yeah. look awfully good. Squeeze right on. There. Yes. One correction here, he does have clam soup in this pasta, but not the clams themselves. Oh, the clams are gone, just the soup. Okay, so that's what will add the flavor to it then. Okay, the to his soup. rigatoni pasta dish and and right there just a couple of drops of olive oil and away it goes and here's another dish or no no this is the same one same one yeah still needs a tad more work i have Squeeze to guess. On. yes here the challenger is working on a combo of abalone salt olive oil fried eggplants and italian plum tomatoes mm, mm. abalone sauce a real delicacy boy you know that's that's getting to me i don't know about you guys hey, but... we are seeing a series <laughs> of dishes that are making us drool and after the appetizers, which one will he start with? I tell you, for finicky gourmets in Kyoto, Sasajima's your man. Got to be. Now, mm. Iron Chef's side. This is a, well, what is this? <laughs> uh, it's um, ravioli and something else. There's something <laughs> shredded on top there. Oh, that is the skin of the eggplants. All right, fried eggplant skin shredded to add a texture component to the dish, maybe. Visually appealing as well. And the clock ticking down, one minute, 15 seconds left. Both chefs still very much occupied, approaching the one minute mark. Okay, check out the Iron Chef here. This is from the ice cream machine here. Yeah, he mixed wine and honey in this. Hmm. Now he's one putting the ice cream go. into some interesting shapes here with these bowls. What's, what's no, okay, a minute to left. a particular shape, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this was his dessert after all. Look okay, that. but where's his main course? Which dish is Kobe <laughs> gonna use for his main course here? 
Where is it? Main the main dish is in the oven. All right, okay. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be the one that he used the eggplants as containers. You know, the ones that okay, were grilled. Okay, here it is, but still under a minute to go and it's yeah, in yeah, the oven. That, now, right finally, there, yeah. they're getting it out. Yeah, but the pasta has a great volume. Yeah, that's, that's not the main dish. No, not at all. 30 seconds left. Can they get it out? All of them. There go the rabbit ears folded back, covering the inside filling. This battle, a mano a mano Italian cuisine struggle, pitting the Eastern Japan ethic of Italian cuisine as personified by the Iron Chef against that of Western Japan, practiced by the challenger. 15 seconds left now. Both men still scrambling here. 10 seconds. Applying the finishing touches, still scurrying right to the end. Five seconds. Five seconds left. They're Three, on their feet in the royal two, box. One. Three, two, that's it. The cooking's done. The Kamo eggplant battle is over. Great job. Thanks. How do you think you did? Honestly, it wasn't easy because I'm not used to this kitchen, but the assistants did really well. They did some great work. Uh -huh. Yeah. And from your smile, I assume you're confident? Yeah, my smiling face is what draws guests to my place in Kyoto. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a win? Let's hope so. Are you used to this by now? Hmm, well, today, I, well, I didn't have to spend too much time on preparing the eggplants, so it was good. And it turned out well? Well, I tried to add some Japanese touches in the presentation of my dishes. And you succeeded in that? I think the flavor is okay, yes. Now, the challenger says that he's hoping uh -huh. for a win. I'm sure you yeah. are, too. I hope to win, too. Challenger Sasajima is offering these five dishes. First, mackerel and eggplant puree. The cold dish brings a refreshing breeze to the table, taking full advantage of the eggplant's aroma and is accentuated by the saltiness of caviar. Second, sautéed eggplant and abalone. The sourness of tomatoes is blended with the bitterness of abalone liver paste, bringing originality to the dish. His pasta of choice is rigatoni. The clam soup is what helps elicit the true flavor of the eggplant in this course. Fourth, grilled eggplant, a dynamic dish with scallops, prawns, and sea urchin, intricate too, as the flavors are balanced perfectly. Last, eggplant and duck piccata. The breaded foie gras cutlet with herbs placed on top completes the total harmony with eggplant in a supreme presentation. The Iron Chef counters with five dishes of his own. First, eggplant hors d'oeuvre with a hint of Kyoto-style Japanese cuisine. Salt-cured eggplant flavored with balsamico vinegar and olive oil. Sea urchin sandwiched in eggplant with mustard flavor. Fried rolls, basil flavored. And eggplant rolled in ham. These four construct a quartet of various textures of eggplant. Second, marinated eggplant. This is an invigorating dish for summer. Sherry vinegar provides the accentuating touch. Third, ravioli and grilled eggplant. Crispy eggplant skin on top adds curiosity about what's coming. This dish attains an exquisite balance among spicy, sour, and salty flavors. Fourth, stuffed eggplant. The eggplant, tomato sauce, and mozzarella cheese stuffing celebrates the Kamo eggplant's inherent fruity flavor. Last, eggplant dessert. Rum raisins inside allow the sweet eggplant to be enjoyed as a dessert, a truly creative effort from the Iron Chef. The challenger from Kyoto, Yasuhiro Sasajima, contends it's Western Japan's Italian chefs who are realizing the cuisine's full potential. He intends to demonstrate that today against Tokyo-based Iron Chef Italian Masahiko Kobe. For this battle of supremacy between Western and Eastern Japan, Chairman Kaga unveils eggplant as the theme ingredient. Challenger Sasajima submits five dishes to the panel for evaluation. Iron Chef Kobe will try to hold his own, producing a set of five himself. And now the moment of truth, tasting and judgment. On the panel today are Lower House member Shinichiro Kurimoto, actress Kazuko Kato, actor Yoshizumi Ishihara, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes of challenger Sasajima. If you try to serve eggplant Japanese style, the guests will not be impressed. So first, I tried to hide the shape of the eggplant. Uh, and because it's summer, I started with a cold dish. This uses the eggplant in a very clever way. I don't see the shape of the eggplant, but surely I do feel the flavor of it. <laughs> if I didn't know this was eggplant, I would think it was something different, maybe. Yes, it's very sweet. We don't eat a plant like this, you know, in this yes, way, yes. usually. 
So it's really been an eye-opener. Hmm. It was right that you used the milk with the eggplant like this in this dish because it takes advantage of the soft texture of Thank the you. eggplant. Mm. I, I wanted to add a strong body to this dish, so I used the liver of the abalone to make a strong sauce, and then I added a fried piece to it. He's very tactful. The abalone is very good, but the eggplant is losing to the abalone. This is an abalone dish. Personally, I like fried eggplant. And uh, this dish is very nice with the tomato sauce. It's, it's really nice. First, I had five pieces of abalone in this. I would love that at a restaurant, but as an eggplant dish, I only needed two, perhaps not five. Five is too strong for eggplant. <laughs> I would like you to enjoy this as a pasta dish, absorbing the flavors of the eggplant. So I minced the eggplants into very, very small pieces. When I tried this, I thought, where is the eggplant? I would have liked to see the eggplant more clearly present in this dish. I think it would have been better. Mm. Uh, I think so, too. The taste is very good, but I have to ask, where is the taste of the eggplant? I checked out the kitchen stadium's fridge and found some great scampy prawns, so I shifted gears to take advantage of that. The scallops are prepared really skillfully, but again, the eggplants are not speaking up in this dish. If the theme wasn't eggplant, I would vote for this man, perhaps, but... This one, scallop battle. <laughs> <laughs> this is duck served with eggplant sauce, sort of using eggplant for flavoring. The eggplant's flavor really comes out this time in this dish. So I think that the final dish really matches today's theme. This is very fine. All his dishes tasted very good. His personality really comes out in these dishes. It's clear that he's a peaceful man. <laughs> now Iron Chef Kobe's dishes will be served. I use this particular eggplant, Kamo eggplant, for the first time. And to counter the challenge of from Kyoto, I try to add some Kyoto-style finishing to my dishes. My reaction? Well, is it okay to show everything about eggplant in just one dish? Yes, but I'm looking forward to what's next. This speaks out for his aggressive personality. <laughs> the sea urchin roe is not arrogant at all. You know, it really gives way to the eggplant. Well, that's what I mean about the personality. Yeah. Oh, you're saying he's the eggplant in this, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this dish is to enjoy the eggplant's natural flavor with the sauce. The eggplant is in the ravioli as well as the other things, and so this really qualifies as a dish that reflects the theme today. Pasta was what I wanted to see, how he would use eggplant in his pasta dish. I think he did really well in using eggplant in the dish. Japanese-style eggplant dishes usually are a bit greasy, but after frying them, I put them in the oven once again to chase away all the extra oil. This is really subtle. It's a very nice dish. It, it almost has a Japanese feeling. This dish reminds me that Kamo eggplant is a particularly delicious type of eggplant. This is my dessert today, using eggplants in place of a sponge cake. The subtle sweetness of the eggplant should have been used more. The ice cream in it almost adds too much. Well, with the eggplants that, you know, we usually use at home, when you cook them they lose their shape, but these have really maintained their shape, and I don't know how you did it, but it's uh, impressive. You know. I boiled these once and then took them out of the water and put them in the oven with uh, sugar on top. I see. Uh, you're very skillful. This speaks out for your personality as well. <laughs> <laughs> the Iron Chef told us he tried to create some in Kyoto style, but his dishes were very strong. In a way, true Italian, I think. Honestly, I wasn't expecting too much from only eggplant, but I really enjoyed today's dinner, really. The panel's working on the verdict. East and West, who is best?
カモナスを表現しきったのはどちらでしょうかそれでは発表します The two chefs put their pride on the line today, in addition to regional interpretations of Italian cuisine being pitted against each other. Challenger Sasajima from Kyoto says Eastern Japan's approach lacks direction and focus. Iron Chef Kobe rejects that claim and is trying to defend his and his Tokyo colleagues' integrity. Who takes the battle? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? It's the Iron Chef! Masahiko Kobe comes away with the win. Kobe takes this Kamo eggplant battle. Another grueling duel, another big win. And by extension, he scores a victory for all of Eastern Japan's Italian chefs. Okay, a look at the scoring. Kurimoto, 1817 Iron Chef. Kato, 1917 Iron Chef. Ishihara, 1917 Iron Chef. Kishi, 1916 Iron Chef. A sweep for Kobe, who had to feel real heat in Kitchen Stadium today. But he turns back the challenge of the young gun from the West. And it's remarkable. On this day, at least, the sun, Masahiko Kobe, and Japan's top Italian cuisine all rise in the East.